Look out. He's right behind you. He's right behind you. He's right... Well, another one bites the dust. If you're a character in a horror movie and not designated as a hero, your job is essentially to die. Nice enough, you may not exactly be thrilled about this prospect, so here are a few things that I've come up with that might help you survive to the end of the movie. As opposed to the usual stuff you do in movies, which are usually incredibly stupid and lead to your painful, painful death. Cemeteries are just bad news. There's either a demonic ritual going on, or a chemical's about to raise the dead, or it's Halloween night and the killer is stalking people in, or something like that. Cemeteries are where the dead people are, you're alive, just stay away. If you come across something which is demonic or deadly, don't touch it. If you're, if you're an archaeologist in an ancient tomb where there's a ritual or an artifact supposed to raise the dead, don't touch it. If you're in an in a old abandoned house and there's a mysterious book or tape recording or something down in the basement set to, set to summon demons to possess the living, don't touch it. If you don't touch it, you can't summon the devil and you'll be all right. If you do touch it, you deserve everything that happens to you. Strangers are going to be one of two things. In league with the killer, or no apparent use to you. Never pick up hitchhikers. Never go to a mysterious house in the middle of nowhere to ask to use their phone. Never talk to anybody who is a stranger or that isn't in your immediate circle of friends. If at all possible, leave the area immediately and don't talk to anybody. Sex is a definite no-no in these movies. Not only do many of the serial killers have some sort of sexual repression as part of their backstory, but when you have sex, you release coitus energy, which they can pick up and use like a homie beacon to go straight for you. Plus the fact that if you're embraced in the throes of passion, you're naked and distracted, so they can easily come up and kill you. Stay virgin, stay alive. People coming in to investigate the ghosts, killings, etc. are just trouble. Either they're going to get themselves killed in a stupid way because they're skeptical, or they're going to get you killed because they've been designated as the film's heroes. Avoid them, go somewhere else, and hopefully you'll stay alive while they end up with their heads on pikes. If you find an alien ship on a distant planet, or you get a distress call, or you get a message from aliens claiming to be friendly, don't go. Ten to one, you'll arrive on the planet, find a, a bunch of alien eggs, or some people want to take over your bodies and steal your ship, or something alien and bad. So believe me, if you get a call from aliens, don't go. Don't go to Mars, and if the guy, if you do go to Mars to pick up a guy from a previous expedition who says the entire, his entire ship was wiped out by an alien, leave! And don't, don't leave the door open either. Alien ships are always bad. Stay away. This may seem kind of heartless, but there's no, no point in mercy in a horror movie. If your friend has miraculously survived a zombie bite, they're going to turn sooner or later and attack you. If you let the crewman in with the mysterious alien stuck to his face, certainly there's going to be a chest burster and everybody's going to die. If someone is infected or in other way associated with the threat, abandon them or kill them right away. You see this a lot in horror movies like, say, Friday the 13th. Listen to that person. If they go around saying that you're all going to die or don't go to the summer camp because a bunch of people were killed there a few years ago, whatever, listen to them. The fact that they sound crazy doesn't mean they're not right. Creepy little children in horror movies fall into two basic categories. Either they'll be the load, slowing you down and causing a lot of trouble, or they'll be in some fashion associated with or possibly be the evil. If you get some creepy little cute who goes around dressed all in black or talking in Latin or turning your head around 90 degrees, it's a good idea to either shoot them in the head or just leave. 
Creepy little kids. Bad news. Never split up. The reason for this is that most killers prefer to take their victims off one by one, and at the most, two at a time. The point is, of course, if you stick together, you not only are better able to know where everybody is, but you're also able to fight off the killer with everybody having a weapon all in one go. This should be obvious to anyone who's ever read Stephen King. Maine is a hotbed of supernatural activity, vampires, and killers. Never go to Maine, because you'll end up either being sucked into the middle of the vortex, killed by a rabbit St. Bernard, tricked into performing some sort of deal for the devil, or just plain end up being eaten by an ancient evil disguised as a clown. Don't go to Maine! There's no point in going to the authorities. They'll be completely useless. Either they won't believe you, or they'll delay you by, say, putting you in a police cell overnight for your own protection, or because I think you're crazy, leaving you at the mercy of the killer when he comes to take out the police one by one and then comes for you, and you can't defend yourself because you're stuck in a cell. At the very least, you should completely avoid the authorities, or if it's in a, say, a zombie setting, raid the police station for weapons. Space is evil. If it isn't an alien invasion come to harvest our brains, or a mysterious space rock which takes over a bulldozer and sets on a rampage, it's aliens who come just because they want to hump us or something. Nothing good ever comes from space because they always have some sort of ulterior motive. They're hunters, or they just happen to like human flesh. If you encounter something coming from space, leave immediately. Never investigate the mysterious crater out in the wilderness. If you hear reports about aliens coming to your town, move. Confined spaces are a killer's best friend, especially if they happen to be dark and full of shadows. Don't go in the basement. Don't go in the bar. Don't go into the creepy forest at night. Don't go to the summer camp where 100 years ago people were sacrificed in a demonic ritual. Any place which is dark, creepy, and have a, could have a killer hiding behind any corner, don't go there. It's near the end of the movie, and there's only a few people left. One character has apparently been singled out as the hero, and thus the likely survivor of the story, so it's the best idea for you to get the hell out of Dodge. You're, you're either, either going to be stupid enough to try to make a deal with the killer, and thus get yourself chopped in half, or you're going to end up as cannon fodder as the hero that battles the guy in the final battle. Leave them. Abandon them. They can handle themselves, and you're just going to end up dead anyway. When they come to the final battle, don't be there. Conventional weapons don't work. Go for the simple stuff. Guns will always jam. Your elaborate electrical trap will try at the last moment or something. Something simple like a shovel, or a wrench, or a pitchfork are perfectly fine to use against the killer. After all, this kind of thing they've probably been using to kill most of your friends to watch the movie, so turnabout is fair play. If it turns out that the killer or monster is in some way associated with ancient magic, believe it. Don't be a skeptic because you'll die in a horrible way. If there's some sort of magical ritual associated with trying to banish this monster, take part in it. Don't just say, oh, this can't possibly work, or I don't believe this, or whatever. If you're facing a vampire, believe in the existence of vampires. That way you'll know how to defeat them. If it's a mystical killer who has to be summoned by a magical ritual, learn up on it and stop the ritual before that monster is summoned. Believe in magic, and you'll stay alive. Be a skeptic, you're dead. This goes with what I was saying earlier about confined spaces. A wide open field is your friend. At some point in the movie, get yourself some supplies, high power flashlights, firmly one than one, a shotgun with lots of ammunition. Sit in the middle of the field with searchlights all around and maybe some traps. Wait for the killer to come to you and when they arrive, blast them in the head. If you're in a horror movie that takes place in, say, a summer camp, 
always wear proper clothing you know, with, uh, say, protection against insects or good solid boots or whatever. So when the killer comes to you, you can escape properly. Don't wear stiletto heels or a skimpy outfit and never go skinny dipping because even if you escape the killer at that moment, you're going to be running through the woods without shoes, completely naked, which is going to provide an even more of a distraction to try to get away from the guy wielding the machete. Proper clothing is your friend. Skimpy, slutty outfits are not. Serial killers have two particular traits. Despite moving at a slow pace, they will always manage to catch up with you, and they can teleport off screen. For that reason, never run. Move at a, move at a solid sword pace faster than they can normally walk. Be careful of everything around you. Never run, and always watch where you're going. It's far too easy for you to be running in a panic, not working behind you, despite, well, Hoping the killer is nervous because he'll be just a couple of steps behind you or maybe just ready to come around the corner as soon as you stop to, to, to take a breath. And when he comes up in front of you, you're moving at a slow pace and you can take your improvised weapon whatever and then chop off their head. Running is, your, running is a surefire way to trip and break your ankle. Walking at a solid pace or even a light jog, you can either outpace the villain or be ready to take them on when they do their off-screen teleport thing and appear in front of you. Strange mysterious noises, you know, knocking or banging or weird noises in the night or the sudden absence of animal sounds are all danger signals. You hear something strange or bizarre, say like weird moans coming from the basement, don't go down there. If you hear a strange scream in the distance or the methodical thump, thump, thump and the dragging sound of a body being carried, don't go in the woods. Strange noises are a warning signal for a reason. Despite what they may say, these people are not here to help you. The army will be coming in to, say, try to get this mysterious alien force or whatever as a weapon. The corporation, probably the one that sent you out there in the first place, will want it for their own ends, and the crew is designated to be expendable. And the government will have some sort of dark plan involved, either for trying to use this force to clear the land away so they can use it to drill for oil, or some other aspect involving assassination, or some other dark plot, and you're just cannon fodder in the way. If you come across the lab of a mad scientist who invites you in for the night because it's raining or whatever, don't go. Just leave. Scientists in movies like this are always doing some crazy experiment for the cause of science, or to prove they're not mad, or to perform something that will improve mankind and at the same time cause lots and lots of danger. If you come across a guy who's building a man in his basement or experimenting with ex new chemicals or trying to find a cure for all diseases, leave immediately. These guys are either crazy or they will have no idea what they're doing or their spirit will go wrong in some horrible, horrible way and doom the world. And as the protagonist, you're food for the monster. It's near the end of the film and the killer is supposedly dead, hung or has a machete in their head or whatever. Don't leave it at that. Don't turn around and walk away. Never turn your back on a killer even if he seems to be dead. Take the opportunity to finish the job. It's like with zombies. Double tap on the head to make absolutely sure. If you've got the mysterious masked killer down on the ground and seems to be dead, don't reach down to pull off their mask, see who they really are or anything like that. Take a crowbar or a sledgehammer Bash your head to pulp and then burn the body. Because otherwise they're just going to come back to life and kill you for the movie's big surprise moment. Make sure they're dead and you'll stay alive. Animals in these movies are a bad idea. Dogs are either going to attack the killer bravely and get killed trying to save your life, or they'll prove a distraction at some point. If you have a cat, Never go back for them because then you'll find that the alien is between you and the escape pod. And in some cases, the animals might actually be turned against you by whatever mysterious force is, is controlling the town. Leave your pets at home and you have a much better chance of staying alive. 
sometimes the killer seems to be after you or a particular group of people for reasons in the past. This is why it's important to know your family history. If it turns out, for example, that your family oh, was responsible as members of a jury for putting a famous uh, serial killer in jail, or they burned the man to death when he was responsible for a series of child murders, or they conducted a secret ritual in the woods back when they were kids, and now, they, and now the evil forces come back for its tribute. Know your family history, and if necessary, disown your family and move far, far away. Don't be in a horror movie, and you won't have to face off against alien monsters, zombies, uh, psycho killers, or some weird guy with knives taped to his fingers who attacks you in your dreams. Much better to be on this side of the screen than spired all across a cabin wall. I'm some Canadian guy, and that's my two bucks. Thank you.